I love wandering around outside. Those of you who watch the show know that I could be out here all the time. There is inspiration to be found everywhere. And today, it's a couple of nuts. <laughs> How appropriate, nuts from a nut. <laughs> Acorns are like these magical little gifts that you find stuffed under trees and tucked under leaves. <laughs> And I thought, what a better way to increase the decor around the house than with a couple of simple little acorns. You can also wear these. You can put them on wreaths. You can put them on little um, sort of displays around hurricane lamps if you're setting up a table. These have an awful lot of cute uses. You can even just use them as keychains if you like. And they look really nifty as clasps on a shawl. Wondering what I mean? Well, let me show you. Ta-da! <laughs> if you recognize this shawl, it's the one we made a couple weeks ago. I love this thing and it's perfect for the fall. And if you want to keep it in place, a handy little thing to use is a big old diaper pin. These are those old fashioned things that some of you probably still have lying around the house and they make great clasps or closures for things like big lacy crocheted shawls or wraps or cowls or hats or pretty much anything you're going to use a big lacy stitch in. Why not decorate it with a couple of cute little acorns? It kind of says autumn and it's interchangeable. You can change it out with just about anything else, but right now I feel like wearing a couple of little acorns. <laughs> I love these. They're super cute. And that is what we're going to make today. So grab your hooks, grab your yarn. Let's head to the craft table and get nuts. <laughs> In order to make our little acorns today, we are going to work with a smaller hook than normal and smaller yarn. So I used DK or what's commonly known as a double knit or sport weight yarn for this. So it's a slightly thinner yarn. It's about a size three if you're using the yarn scale and um, you can use a slightly bigger yarn but you have to remember to upsize your hook. So I like this because I want a small little nut. So I'm using small yarn. You're going to want a nice light brown for the top of your acorn and a darker brown for the bottom of your acorn. And you need very, very, very little. So obviously I could probably get a whole forest worth of acorns out of this much yarn. You just need tiny wee little bits of scraps. Um, so that's actually kind of a lot of, kind of a nice way to use up tiny wee bits that you've got left behind. And nothing says your acorn has to be brown. You can make it bright purple if you want. <laughs> it's your acorn. It's entirely up to you. I'm using a size 4 millimeter hook today. You can also use a 3.75, which is also known as an F5 needle. Um, this is also titled a US6, so if that's how you know your hook sizes. This is a 4 millimeter hook I'm using, but you can use um, sizes either side of it if you like. The idea is that you want to get nice, small little stitches, so make sure that your hook matches your yarn. You also need a pair of scissors and a yarn needle with a nice big eye in it because you're going to do a little bit of sewing. Not a lot, just a little bit. And once you have all that, we can get started. We're going to start with the bottom part of our acorn and we're going to start right at the very little tiny tip. So this is the tiniest part of the uh, nut that we're going to make. So grab your dark brown yarn and you're going to start with a cinch circle. I have a link to my cinch circle tutorial in the description box down below. So if you need a little bit of help with that, you can check out that tutorial. But you can make a cinch circle however you're comfortable making it. And remember to chain one just so you secure that circle. I always like to pull my little tail out too. So there's your cinch circle. Now we begin row one. Row one consists of three, so that's three, single crochets. So we're going to single crochet into our cinch circle three times. There's one, two, oops, and three. Should look something like that. Grab that little short tail and your work and cinch that circle shut. Move my little acorn out of the way here. Now, this is the tight part of the work. This is probably the most little awkward bit, so just be patient with yourself. You want to identify the first single crochet you made 
and you want to work directly into it. So we're not joining with a slip stitch, we're just going to work directly into row two. So take your hook and get right into that first single crochet you made. Grab your long string and we're going to start single crocheting again. So row two, we are now on to row two, is two single crochets into each of those first three single crochets that you made in row one. So two single crochet into each stitch all the way around and then you're going to have a total of six at the end. And this is really, really tiny work. So remember that you don't have to go quickly. You want to be as, you know, careful as you as you can because you want a nice sort of round, pokey little bottom. Um, but it does get easier from here on out. <laughs> okay, so there's my sixth single crochet. So I now have two single crochet into each of those first three. So that completes row two. I have six single crochet. And if you're unsure, always count. Count all the way around the edge. And we're not joining this row with a slip stitch either. We're going to work directly into the next stitch. And we're going to work the pattern two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet. So you work two single crochet into that first stitch, one, two, work one single crochet into that next stitch, one, work two single crochet into the next stitch, one, two, one into the next stitch, one, and for your last two stitches in row two, you're going to work two, one. So two single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet into the last stitch. So that completes row three, and row three now has nine stitches all the way around it. So I know it's a bit hard to see because you've got your long tail from your cinch circle hanging out, but don't worry, that's going to turn into stuffing. So just try to work around it and ignore it. Now, that was probably the hardest part <laughs> of our nut. <laughs> I'm going to just poke my little finger up in it so you can sort of start to see that nice little pointy bottom and it rounds up into a nice sort of nut shape. Now we're going to just single crochet straight. So still not joining our rows with a slip stitch. We're just working directly into the next stitch. For the next two rows, so rows four and five, you're just going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around and every row will have nine stitches in it. So you will continue to have only nine stitches around the outside of your little nut here. And if you have trouble kind of seeing where you're at, just single crochet 18 times and that equals two rows of nine stitches. But it's a nut and things found in nature are frequently oddly shaped. So if your nut works out being oddly shaped, it will actually look more real. <laughs> so don't stress, don't worry about having a perfect nut or having the perfect count of stitches you want to make the bottom of an acorn that looks like the bottom of an acorn. And if you need to add a couple extra stitches, then that's what you need to do. Okay, once you've completed your fifth row, or you have the bottom of an acorn that fits over top of your index finger, something like that, and looks mostly even around the bottom edge, then you are finished the bottom of your acorn. Take that short tail and just stuff it into the body of your acorn. That's going to act as a little bit of stuffing. And to finish off our little acorn, we're going to slip stitch to close off our final row. So put your hook through the next stitch and just slip stitch. That closes off your last row. Now you can snip your yarn
and fasten off. So just grab your yarn and pull it back through that last loop on your hook all the way. Give it a nice tight tug. And just to make it a little neater, you're going to take your hook and go from the inside through the next stitch and just grab that string oops, and pull it back through. The only thing I'm doing is I'm just pulling my tail through to the inside of my nut, just like that. And then I'm just going to stuff it into my nut. So nothing fancy, it's just acting like stuffing. Stuff, stuff, stuff. <laughs> there. That is the bottom of our acorn done already. And that was the hardest part. <laughs> now we're going to move on to the top. So you want your lighter brown color. And we're going to begin with a cinch circle. And make it as small or as large as you're comfortable. Make sure you chain one to sort of lock it into place. And this is going to be a lot um, a lot easier to work with than the beginning of our nut. So this is the top. The top's a little bit bigger than the bottom. Into our cinch circle, we're going to begin by single crocheting five. So five single crochets into our cinch circle. That's one. Two. Three. Four, and, and five. There we go. Looks something like that. Grab that little short tail, cinch it tightly shut. Ta -da! And this is a little easier to see than the three that we did. So it's the same thing. We're not joining with a slip stitch. We're going to work directly into that first single crochet we made to begin row two. Row two is two single crochet into each stitch around. So because you began with five, when you're finished row two, you're going to have ten. So just identify that first single crochet, and it might be a bit tight. I don't know about you, but my first single crochet in a cinch circle is always just a little on the tight side. But that's why we have hooks. So if you have to hook your way through that <laughs> first stitch. There we go. Okay. Whew! Tight fit. You're going to single crochet two times into that first stitch. This one. And the second one's always a little easier. Ah. Come here, you. Two. Woohoo! All right. Two more into each stitch around. So by the end of row two, you have ten single crochets. Nine and ten. Okay, that is starting to look like the cap of an acorn. <laughs> Row two has a total of ten single crochets in it, and that is the only increasing we're going to do for the top. So for row three, we're just going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So we're going to continue to have ten stitches. So row three will have ten stitches in it. You're only going to single crochet once into each stitch around, and what this is going to do is it's going to kind of pull your top, your little flat circle here, into a bit of a cap-like shape. And... ten! Okay! There is the cap of our acorn! <laughs> now, just like we finished off the bottom, you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, like that, and you're going to cut a long tail. So I mean like 30 to 45 centimeters of tail, just to be on the safe side. And same thing, just grab it, pull it back through that loop, so the whole thing, whee, all the way back through that last loop on your hook, give it a nice tight tug, and, oh my gosh, it's so cute. <laughs> it's going to fit on top of the bottom of your nut, <laughs> just like that. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Now, if you want to add a little extra stuffing to the inside of your nut, just go ahead and snip a little more yarn. Not a lot, because it's not a very big space. 
and just sort of wind it around your finger just like that and then sort of stuff it into the nut and I like to use my baby finger to kind of just jam it in there and if you want to jam it down nice and tightly it will eventually sort of loosen up as you use your nut <laughs> so it will redistribute itself inside so you don't have to worry about it you know being bottom heavy or anything there so now I'm going to take my top take the end of my top and I'm going to thread it up on my yarn needle just like that and where my sort of last, my sort of my fasten off is, so my last little knot here, I consider that sort of the back of my acorn. Now, obviously, it's not really going to matter a whole lot. This looks pretty even all the way around. But just because I like to line up ends, I'm going to find where I knotted off on my acorn bottom. And I don't know if you can see that, but there it is right there. And I'm just going to line that up. Here's the magic part. Instead of whip stitching, which is where you go around and around in circles, we're going to do straight stitching to put this together. So I'm going to kind of just stuff the nut into the top of my acorn. And then I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to go up. So I'm going to go through the stitch of my acorn top, come out the bottom, and I'm going to go under the post of one of the stitches in the last or the top row of my acorn. So right under the post, just like that. And then before I, I finish, I'm going to bring my needle out through the top of the stitch, just like that, of the top of my acorn cap. What that's going to do is create a row of stitches that mirrors the top of the cap. So I'm going to go in down through the top of the next stitch. So down through the top of the stitch on the top, the cap. Make sure I pick up all of it. And then put my needle under the post. So under the post of a stitch. And if I have to bring it all the way through, I will and then take my hook and go back up through the whole stitch of the cap of my acorn. Now, I don't want to pull it too tightly because I don't want to warp the look of it. So I'll just pull it out just actually so you can see that. So this is a straight stitch. The straight stitch is going to go in and out, in and out, in and out, all the way along the top. So what you're doing is you're straight stitching along the top just along the top of your acorn cap, but you're picking up posts. So just like this part of the stitch, you're picking up the post of the stitch of your acorn bottom. And that is going to sew the top to the bottom of your little nut. And it's going to look a little more organic. So instead of whip stitching, where you'd have obvious stitches, these little stitches that run along the top are going to look like part of the top of your acorn. So they're not going to be as obvious. There you go. So you're just going to do that in and out, in and out, all the way around your entire acorn. <laughs> and don't worry, you're going to do this a couple times. So if you don't get every single stitch all the way around the first time, don't worry. Because you're going to end up going around a second time. Once you get a back around to where you started, and that's about my spot right there, we're going to put in the hanger. So if you're making this for a keychain, or if you're making it so that you can hang it off a brooch, or you're going to put it on a wreath, if you want a hanger, this is the part that you put the hanger in. So you take your needle, again, go through the top, just as if you were going to continue sewing all the way around the top of your acorn. But instead, you come out the top. So right out through the middle, of the top of your acorn. Remember not to pull your stitches too, too tightly. Then you're going to make a loop. You're going to take your hook, go back down through the same hole, and you want to start, so if there's my there's my log off part, or my where I fastened off. I'm going to come back 
out through the top of the stitch next to it. So, and then I'm going to keep my finger in my loop. I'll pull out my little tail here. And I'm going to pull my string or my yarn until that hanging loop is as tall as I want. And I think I don't want it any shorter than that. So now you're going to keep, try to keep your finger in there just so that it doesn't get away on you. And then you're going to continue around again. So you're going to take your needle and you're going to continue sewing in and out through the top of your acorn, making sure you pick up a piece of the bottom of your nut as you go. Try not to make your stitches too tight, so when you pull your yarn, don't make it too, too tight. And make sure that you, that first couple stitch, those first couple stitches you do, you don't make them too tight because you don't want to lose your hanger. And you go all the way around again, all the way around your nut. All right, I'm going to just poke my needle up through for the last stitch. There we go. And I'm not going to knot this. If you're using a slippery kind of yarn, just knot your yarn off really, really tiny once, right here on the outside. But if you're using, this is actually wool that I've got here, it's a scrap of wool. Wool tends to sort of knot in on itself. So if you weave your yarn back and forth enough times, it's not going to come out. So now I'm just going to poke my needle all the way through my nut. This is going to sort of secure the top to the bottom. I'm going to make sure that my stitches still aren't very tight. And I'm going to do that a couple times. All the way through it. Back and forth. Just to secure that thread. Again, I don't want it to be too tight. There go. And then I'm going to bury the rest of it in the nut. So there, you are now all done, your tiny wee little scrap acorn. At this point, you just kind of want to squish it into shape, you want to maybe make sure the bottom's nice and pointed, sort of round it up, turn it into something that looks relatively acorn-like. And now you're all ready to decorate for the autumn. <laughs> everybody that is how you make a cute little acorn I'm gonna make a whole pile of them I think I'm gonna put them everywhere <laughs> and don't forget Christmas is coming if you're looking for a cute little idea to hang on your tree these would make really sweet little Christmas decorations you can add little beads to them too to make them just a little extra fancy and you can put them on top of people's gifts or hang them in people's Christmas cards there's a whole bunch of uses for these things so get creative make yourself up a pile of nuts <laughs> and give them away. <laughs> and don't forget to wear a couple to, you know, school or work to see if anybody notices. I think they're just so cute. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. We will see you again very soon on the Jada and Stitches show. Remember, if you make things and you want to post pictures to me, you can share them with me on my Instagram account, on Google+, Pinterest, or even over at my Etsy shop. Please feel, feel free <laughs> to visit me in all four of those places and say hello. I love it when you do, and it totally makes my day. So have a lovely week, everyone. Stay crafty, and don't be afraid to find inspiration anywhere, no matter how big or small. <laughs> Bye, everybody.